Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. We don't really have much going on around here at the museum, uh, so we were playing some Battleship bowling earlier, and these were our bowling pins. One of these can be fired from our 5-inch guns. The other one, though also being an American 5-inch projectile, cannot be. Why is that? Uh, so, first of all, kind of a clickbaity thing. Neither one of these can actually be fired by our guns uh, because they don't have brass base rings. These are for practice loading machine. They're not actually for firing. But this is a 5-inch 38 caliber round for practice loading machine. It's about 54 and a half pounds. Uh, we've talked about these before. If it was a real round, it would have a brass base ring there and it would probably have a, a, a steel bodied and it would have a nose. It's more similar to this one with the uh, time fuse type setting on it. Th this is more or less a US Navy hot potato that was designed to train gunner's mates how to pass these things around in a quick and effective method. And this is a very similar thing, uh, but immediately post-World War II uh, to the early 2000s. So the 5-inch 38 is the type of gun that USS New Jersey has. Uh, she was built with 20 of them in 10 twin mounts. Four of those twin mounts get removed to be replaced with missiles. This is what the Montana-class battleship secondary batteries were going to have. The U.S. Navy, right at the end of World War II, makes the step up from the venerable 5-inch 38 caliber gun uh, to the 5-inch 54 caliber gun. Remember, the 5-inch 38 was a compromised gun. The Navy had the 5-inch 25 and the 5-inch 51. Uh, the 25, real short barrel, great for throwing around for uh, quickly aiming at aircraft. They tended to be on the main decks of battleships and carriers for that sort of stuff. The 5-inch 51 uh, was a great flat trajectory. It was good at shooting at surface targets, but it couldn't elevate to engage aircraft. Uh, Texas is a great example of a ship that's armed with the 5-inch 51. Because it can't engage aircraft, they also have to have other anti-aircraft guns usually mounted on a deck above them. So during the interwar period, the Navy takes the average of those two numbers, 25 and 51, and they come up with the 38. So it is a dual purpose gun. It can be used for both. And it is supremely effective and uh, used until uh, very close to the present day in the US Navy. In fact, when the Iowas are reactivated and used into the 90s, this gun system is still used on board and on board some other ships as well. Like I said, uh, the 5-inch 54, hearing that number makes you think that, hey, that should be a surface-only caliber. The great thing about this, 55 pounds, it can be manually loaded. Notice that the 54 is a little bit larger. At 70 pounds, it's just a little bit heavier than uh, what the Navy thinks can be manually loaded. About 66 pounds is the, uh, the limit for manual guns, which is also why uh, this is a semi-fixed projectile. The projectile and the powder come separately, because if they came together, it would be too heavy to manually load. So the thing that makes the Navy decide, uh, hey, we need something with heavier stopping power, uh, both because aircraft are getting bigger, faster, higher range, we need to be able to engage them at longer ranges, with a heavier bursting charge. And surface ships are the same. We need something that can do damage to surface ships. And we're starting to remove the big gun ships. Uh, so the five inch gun is gonna be the main gun that we have. So the thing that makes this shell possible is we start to develop auto loading technology. By the uh, immediate post-World War II age, we have auto loading eight inch guns, auto loading six inch guns, and auto loading five inch guns. Uh, believe it or not, the 8-inch guns ended up working the best on the Des Moines class. The 6-inch uh, guns on the Worcesters probably worked the least. And uh, the 5-inch 54 initially kind of meh. There's been some speculation that uh, ships like Montana might have actually been completed with 38s instead of 54s. However, we know that the aircraft carrier uh, Midway is completed with the 5-inch 54. She's part of the same building program as the Montanas. Uh, but at the same time, ships like Montana, and there was a uh, light cruiser similar, uh, somewhere in the evolutionary scheme between the Atlantic class light cruisers and the Worcester class light cruisers that fills that anti-aircraft role that was going to have this 5 and 54 around. That's uh, canceled as well. So many of these early ships get the axe. 
However, the gun uh, continues to be used pretty heavily as the primary battery of ships. Ships like the uh, Forrestal class supercarriers get it. Ships like the Forrest Sherman class destroyers and the Charlie Adams class destroyers uh, that we were follow on of them, the guided missile ones, uh, had some of these gun mounts as well. And by that point, the auto loading technology was pretty good. It became an effective thing. Uh, this is the basis of the main battery gun on American ships today. Uh, even on to ships like the Bruins class destroyers, Ticonderoga class cruisers, and early Arleigh Burke destroyers are all armed with uh, newer model 5 inch 54 guns. Uh, with the most recent Arleigh Burks getting the, an upgrade to the 5 inch 61, a slightly larger version of this. And again, they're all auto loading uh, because this is just a little bit too heavy to be manually loaded with any kind of uh, consistency, especially with the rates of fire that we want out of these main battery guns. So if they both have a 5 inch diameter, you know, why can't this one fit in our 5 inch guns? The main reason is the, the loading tray isn't big enough for one of these. If you look at the back of a five inch gun, there, there's a lip there that you can set the shell on prior to rolling it into the tray. That's enough room for the powder and the shell. Uh, this shell being taller will not fit in the loading tray as it exists. And uh, it has a larger powder canister. And so that won't fit either. So there, there just isn't enough room in the breech of one of these guns to take one of these shells and there was no point in modifying it because the 5 inch 38 was such a great weapon. The only major downside to the 5 inch 38, the manpower requirements. The fact that you need a dozen men or more in the gun mount, another dozen in the upper handling room, two dozen in the magazines, I, increases the crew and, and therefore the weight of the mount compared to something like this that, that becomes fully automatic. What's your favorite battleship secondary caliber gun? Let us know in the comment section down below. Do you think the US Navy should have increased the size of its guns for more stopping power like many other navies did? Or do you think the 5 inch 38 was as good as it gets? Let us know down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us and the channel. Thanks for watching.